One, two, three. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Mixed Music Podcast. I'm your host DK and with me as always is Lou, the, linear? the great Moreno. Lou the great, <laughs> just the great Moreno, like <laughs> the great one, the great, the dragon, the dra- the great dragon Moreno. There you have go. you ever seen the movie Beowulf? No, I've not. I don't think I have. Okay. I watched that last night, and if I had to be a dragon, I don't want to be Beowulf's dragon. Why? What's what's wrong with his dragon? Turns out it was his son. I had to stab him in the neck and everything. They both died together. It was so sad. Oh, shoot. Yeah. That's but I'll be sad. a dragon in general. I'll be that. At least at least I, I get to more live like, with treasures. I've been playing a lot of like Zelda recently, Breath of the Wild. So you're still trying to take me down. Damn, No, DK. no, no. You can't take him down. You can't take down the dragons in Breath of the Wild. You just like really? collect. You just shoot them with arrows and then you collect like scales and like you collect like a fang or two. So I'm like a financial uh, piggy bank. I don't. You can sell the stuff, but usually you use them to like get into secret places. But you know, you definitely That's like a you really can, odd thing you can to farm them. You could farm them to sell. They they do have high value in the game. Anyway, this is really random. We're gonna go. We're gonna go right into the topic today, which we're, is what did you say it was? It's the mysticism of how to get more depth in your mix by EQing your effects. How to get more depth in your mix by EQing your effects? I think this is a good one. Um, we've talked about this briefly. I don't think we've ever dedicated an episode about it though. Um, let's go right into it. Uh, okay. First off, this show is sponsored by isotope.com. Yes, it is. Isotope. And, uh, uh, isotope has awesome products. If you go to isotope.com backslash MM podcast, you can get 10% off any of their products or get a first month free in their monthly subscription bundle. I think it's a producer package. Uh, super great company. Lou and I love their stuff and they actually have a great reverb. Have you used their Neoverb? Yeah, I have. I like, I, li- I like the Neoverb a lot, actually. There's yeah. a few different like presets and options, and there's a lot of flexibility in them. It's actually pretty good. I just good. like the way it sounds a little more modern, because I'm used to using like uh, different reverbs from different companies and all that, but they always tend to do like the old school reverb sound, while the Neoverb just kind of has this nice polished sound. Yeah, and I like like their room, and they have like three different options. Their hall, you can do like three reverbs and different types of reflections. It's really cool. Very, very cool uh, plugin. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, let's first talk about EQing your reverb. I think this is a big one. We, we could talk about EQing your delays as well and doing different processing on your delays um, and effects. Um, but I first want to talk about the most simple thing, EQing your reverb. So there's a couple of things that you could do. One, when the reverb is really messing with your lead vocal, I, either it's making, it's exaggerating some frequencies, like oftentimes in, in reverbs, I have to cut that 1K-ish, like around yeah. that range, 1 to 2K out of the reverb. Not all the time, but sometimes, depending on the vocal and how it's been EQ'd and mixed. Um, Bob Horn was telling me about how if we have a vocal that doesn't have a lot of mid-range, boosting the mid-range in the reverb so it cuts through better. So you turn yeah. down the reverb and then you boost that mid-range or wherever the vocal is la- more lacking. And then, so that way the, the reverb You can comes add a little more presence to it. There you go, yeah. yeah. I would say that some people just kind of like leave a wash reverb and, and like just leave it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that that's a good idea necessarily if you don't check for, sometimes that works. Like oftentimes that does work, but you should always check to see if there's like clashing frequencies or seeing if like there's a frequency in your reverb that's really messing or competing with your vocal. Yeah, honestly, for things like that, I like two things. If I'm using just any reverb, uh, Fab Filters Pro MB uh, tends to come in clutch for that, uh, especially if you do the sidechain feature on it. Now, uh, another thing you can use uh, is also from Fab Filter is the the Pro Verb, I think it's called, or Pro R Verb or something like that. Um, but it allows you to actually change the sonic characteristics based on its overall tone and the decay rate. So if you wanted the decay of the mid-range at 1K to be two seconds while the rest of it being one second, you could actually just change that. Or if you want the mid-range to decay significantly faster but leave the low end uh, ringing out a little bit and have the top end just decaying at like, what, like a millisecond or whatever, you could really just filter it out. Um, but if you wanted to shape the EQ of it, you could do it within the same plugin, all within the same screen. It's it's actually really nice. 
There's a there's a couple of reverbs like that. Like um, the Lexicon has like the top end, the high end decay. The 480. Yeah, like their main flagship. I, I love reverb. the 480 for the for leads. I just love it. Yeah. Yeah. That w- that used to be one of my go tos. Um, and yeah, there's like top end decay versus like low end decay. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Um, I've never figured out what diffusion is. Diffusion is essentially adding. Okay, have you ever used um, Valhalla Delay? I don't think Uh, I have. No? Okay, so if you look at Diffusion on a delay, you can actually apply it right back to a reverb, because what is a reverb but thousands of instances of delays on top of each other, right? Um, Well, Diffusion allows you to actually break out and blur the sound as if it's further into the mix. You know how a lot of people will actually add reverb behind a delay to get it to sit better in the mix versus standing out? Diffusion allows it to sink into that verb a little bit more, but it's not actually like sinking into a verb. You're really just breaking apart the sound as if you're adding many micro reflections into it, or at least that's the way it sounds like to me. And then again, we're using our ears, you know, but it really just helps me. Diffusion will help me blur the image of what the reverb is actually doing. So if you wanted like uh, no diffusion on it, your reverb would sound more alike to the words you said. If you add more diffusion, it actually break apart the words and blur it into the distance. So if you wanted a very spacey, um, oh man, what is that? Um, Walheim Whisper. What what is that song? Um, James Blake or something like that. I forget his name, but um, what 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 what. I forget. I don't know. That was a terrible impression. <laughs> but I have no clue. we can add some reverb and post to that and it'll sound just like him. Whatever. But my point is like uh, uh in that song, he actually has this reverb where it doesn't sound anything like his voice. And I remember talking to somebody who I don't know what their tie into the mix was, but apparently he was just around or whatever. Um, or maybe he asked questions to the guy. I don't know how he got this info, but apparently that was like maxed out diffusion so that it wouldn't actually sound exactly like the words he was saying coming through the reverb. That's cool. So uh, that, that's a, like the most basic thing that we could talk about. I mean, I've heard of people putting in compression in their insert yep. before the reverb plug in that way. Um, Shout it out compresses. to Antares. Who? For, Antares for doing the autotune trick too. Auto tune before the reverb. Yep, I do it all the time. There you go, I and love then, it. and then so that way it puts the reverb more in tune. Exactly. Without affecting the actual main vocal. Um, what's another thing here? Um, I knew a lot of people that like change pitch or like automates mm-hmm. formant as after a reverb. Uh, Use the Juno chorus on it if you want to get some more like warbly kind of reverb. And this is also like when you do a send and on the ins on the the aux bus where the the signal is being duplicated and being sent to. That you put the first insert as um, the the whatever it is the chorus the the altar boy for tonality whatever it is or the the uh, auto tune and then you put a reverb on with one hundred percent wet um, the compression as well before mm-hmm. the reverb right um, let's see I've seen a lot of that stuff with delays I've seen people put in a reverb right after the delay with like a, a little bit not too too wet. Like maybe like fifteen to thirty percent wet ish, just like a touch to kind of like put it a little bit in the background. Mm-hmm. I've seen uh, with delays, people like to do like distortion, definitely pitch shifting oh, there. Yeah. Uh, do like panning, left and right panning. That's usually like a ping pong delay that's built into the delay itself. I'll actually, funny enough, Chorus. shout out to uh, to Sound Toys. Uh, uh, everybody loves Echo Boy and the ping pong feature on it, but for a little more control, I actually use Pan Man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. I After love the delay. Man. After any delay. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes on a reverb. Let's see what else. There's like a lot of creative things as well. Like this is not just um this is not just uh okay, yo, can we talk about this? I know some people that get really nerdy and this is something that you and I might disagree on from I have to guess. Okay. Okay, I know a lot of people, and I know, I know you've done this in the past because we all, some many people have. Mm-hmm. All right, sinking their, sinking a delay to a tempo, is normal. Mm-hmm. Sinking a reverb, calculating the milliseconds or whatever, mm-hmm. to a tempo. Mm-hmm. 
honestly speaking, honestly, I've practically, done it many times and I still do it to this day. Practically speaking, how much more do they have to pay you in order for you to, to get you to do that? Or do you just do that? Nothing. For I do it by default. Uh, reason being is that, um, one, you know me, I love math. Math is fun. Um, two, it actually takes the guesswork out of like a lot of the, well, how long of a delay should, uh, reverb should we have? It's like, all right, this is the tempo, this and that. For this kind of track, I'd want the, the, the reverb to go no longer than a half note. So what's a half note in milliseconds? So I can just put that milliseconds on the reverb and just have a center point versus having to listen in and be like, did that end out too early or end out too far? I'd rather just be in the center and be like, no, nope, still needs a little more and take the guesswork out of it. So this is where one of those things where I'm going to have to speak and I have to say this carefully. Hurt me. To do that is awesome and it, and it can work for some people. But if you do not do that, it is not hurting you or your mix at all. At all. No, I know a lot more people who just look at that and they're like, why? So for me, it's not that I don't believe that it works. I believe that it works and it's mm. awesome. I just don't think that the mental effort is worth the end result. I actually have, um, so we talk for me, about, for me. we talk about like sheets and algorithms and all that, right? Yeah. I actually have on my Google sheets, something that actually allows me to just punch in a tempo and it will actually just do all the work for me in the future. So anytime I actually have a question myself, like, huh, if I wanted to do this specific plugin That's and like this a good plugin, for like a wash reverb. No, it's definitely but good. But if you're like throwing a reverb for like specific words, like I just want like 12 fucking seconds. Like I want a long ass reverb with no, the no, chorus I get that. on it. But let's say that you're trying to do like a reverse reverb. Uh, that's useful for like a reverse. Yeah, it's like I want this to come in uh, uh, like a whole bar ahead. But the reverb that you're using, let's say like uh, like the BX20 from AKG on the UA platform. That thing has no millisecond calculator or anything, but I've seen plugins like uh, like uh, the Slate, uh, what is it, Verb Suite Classics. You could set it to sync, and it'll do it automatically for you. Or if you just already know what the number is, you could just type it in and you're done. You know, And then if you want to be in and out of something and you don't want to have to lock into the sync, having it in the millisecond mode gives you a lot more control over like little minor things, but I'm not trying to overguess it. So if I have a specific number that I could just type in real quick and it's going to work perfectly every time, I'm good. So another thing that I do is with Slapback, mm -hmm. I put Isotope Imager. Mm -hmm. And if you have the free Imager, the first version, which is the better one in my opinion, mm -hmm. and if you go to the new one that came out, the Imager 2, which I still think is free on their website. Should be. Imager 2, they have two stereo widening algorithms they have the first gen and second gen first mm -hmm. gen all the way leave it at the default six milliseconds mm -hmm. widen that bitch up a little bit mm -hmm. that sounds good i don't yeah. like the gen two i like the gen one no, what, sound -wise. what have you heard the difference being uh gen two like pans it a little bit more oh i get it it's a little more distracting yeah it's a little bit more yeah. distracting where like gen one I, is I like, like just a general almost unheard yeah, like it, it's yeah. a general plastering of wideness across the board yeah. rather than like frequent, some frequencies are allocated over here and other frequencies are allocated over here. So let me ask you this. This is something I've done in the past with success and without success. Um, have you ever used Waves Center on a reverb and cut the center? I have not done it for a reverb, mm -hmm. but I do that all the time. With a delay? No, with just in tracks in general, like oh, with backing, backing vocals, vocals or things like, or a synth. That's I'll do mid side EQ for backing vocals for that reason. Because sometimes I want the backing vocals to still be in the middle, but I just don't want a certain like, frequency I don't do that. area I don't, of it. I want to rephrase. I don't do that all the time, but yeah. there are definitely a few times where there's just a little bit too much in the middle and I want a little bit more space for whatever it is. But the, the lead blend vocals. sounds weird if you take them out of the middle, right? The blend? Of the backing vocals. Like, yeah, if I do too much. I'm only exactly. doing like 2 dBs yeah. max. Of that, yeah. maybe, maybe we'll go to four, but that's like a lot. That's why I do the the EQ route on that. But same thing, I'll go into Pro Q three, go mid side and mode in it, and cut from the mids. Um, but that's what I was saying. Like as far as center and uh, doing like reverbs and things of that nature, like I want the reverb to be really exaggerated. Sometimes I have tracks where there's like so much reverb on the vocal, but the vocal sounds dry, and they're like, "How the fuck did you do that?" I'm like, mid side, mid side there's all day long. 
Jason Joshua is famous for always saying um, uh, one of the things that he always talks about is is widening using like the S1 widener from mm-hmm. Waves, from Waves yeah. and putting that after the reverb. So putting the reverb and then widening it even more, maxing it out so the mm-hmm. reverb's like behind you almost. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I can't speak for myself to say that that works, uh, but um, I haven't I haven't really tried it to be honest. I just remembered it right now, and I don't think I've ever put it into practice. Maybe once or twice, but I've I've done it never to max, but to exaggerate. I've done it to exaggerate a little bit yeah. with various different wideners. I've never, like, maxed it out. Hmm. You know, I will say this. Shout out to Isotope. What I have done is go into Ozone, and you know how you can pull out modules as individual plugins instead of having to load up the whole thing? Um, uh, what is it called? Ozone 9's uh, spreader or frequency widener? What What is the module called? Oh, um, um, stereo Stereo imager. imager. That's what it is. Um, and I'll do uh, frequency specific uh, on reverbs and things of that nature where I want like the top end actually a little bit closer, even though like a lot of people say, oh, you want top end on the sides to make things sound bigger. But if I want a more, more intimate reverb or something that sounds darker, more soulful or something, I want the actual reverb to kind of like decay in the low end a little bit wider, like really spread itself out instead of having the low end clash with like low end instruments. There's something else that I was going to say, too, like some trick that I've done. But I, th- I think that the one thing people should do more often, this is huge. This is a big one into a boring mix, into a really clean, nice mix, is to automate your... F- I don't do a lot of automations, mm-hmm. but I, I, I'd I like to... I automate first the effects. Yeah. Like I do delay throws, even reverb throws. Like I keep talking about this song because it's one of my favorite mixes of all time, but Boyfriend by Selena Gomez mm-hmm. has some of the coolest, easiest. It's so such low-hanging fruit. It's so easy to do, but... It was just done so well is the 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 vocal reverb throws during her verses. Yeah. And and there's some delay throws in there too. Like those throws make it sound so expensive and so nice. And it kind of when you do throws like that, it really what it does is instead of like a blanket reverb, which is adding space, it once it goes dry again, it really gives you contrast. Yeah. Like once the reverb comes in, you really appreciate it because it wasn't there. And then once it's gone, like you, you start to like realize how dry it is. Like you appreciate mm-hmm. the dryness of it as well as the reverb of it when you turn it on and off instead of like a blanket reverb. So that's like one of my favorite things from that song. It's kind of funny. Um, I think I took this tip from Jesse Ray Ernstern. Um, um, but it's it's kind of like I like I don't want to say he's readapting something that's already been known, but. I feel like I've been doing this, but I pushed it to a little more of an extreme after I heard what he was doing. Um, you know the the old Abbey Road's reverb filter thing? You roll off like 6K and above, 300 and below. Um, well, I remember he was talking about a mix that he did for, I think it was either Burner Boy or somebody. where he's, uh, I had asked a question uh, to him on Instagram. I think he responded to mine or somebody else's same question style, basically getting a clean vocal with reverb obviously there but not clashing you know because that's that's a big thing i've seen for a lot of people's mixes the reverb is either too much too little or seemingly perfect like sometimes the rough mix is the way to go with the reverb sound that's how they felt and it came out great the first time but um he was rolling off like 3k and 600 hertz so it was all mid-range and then, like, when I saw, like, when he showed his screen or whatever, like, he was actually sending a, quite a bit of an, uh, of it. And it wasn't anything that I necessarily thought, like, oh, he just rolled off more to have more mid-range presence. But when I tried it on a mix, the vocal sounded drier, even though I had, like, the send knob at maybe, like, I don't know, minus 10. I don't know. I know that's not very relative, relevant uh, number when listening to us on the podcast, but, like... There was a good amount of reverb, but in context of the mix, it sat perfectly. It sounded like a dry vocal with presence behind it, which was really nice. I, I picked that up from uh, Jesse, but um, I'm gonna have to listen to this episode that. again and like and, and take some notes and try that. Yeah, like I really like it. I actually sent off a mix, and somebody told me uh, they're they're the first time I tried it. Their response was that is the best reverb I've ever heard on my vocal. I took. Um, I took Nels, shout out Nels, uh, what's Nels IG? Nels Music 801. Yeah, that guy, insane with his reverbs, love his productions, but I used his Valhalla Vintage Verb Chaotic, uh, uh, Chaotic Hall. Chaotic Hall thing, 
Um, he has a preset. Applied uh, Jesse Ray's filter and pre-delay uh, suggestions um, or little tricks that he's done. You know, a mesh between the two of them. And they said that was the best reverb they ever heard on their voice. I was sending a lot, and it felt like it was. I felt like I was sending nothing. That's amazing. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So the point is, there's lots of different things you could do to the delay, to the reverb, to different effects, um, using choruses and like mm-hmm. blending. You sh- I think that if you automate your effects, and if you do neat things with it, and it doesn't have to be too much. You don't have to be super extra. But the point is, if you give tender love and care, some TLC to your effects, it can make or break the song. Yeah. Uh, adding uh, reverb and just simply leaving it there can actually muddy up the low mids in your mix, the mid range, making it sound like everything's blurred, creating no contrast in the depth of it. If you want depth in your mix, you're going to have to cut away some of the fat sometimes. And a lot of times it's our reverb that's killing us. Amen. I think so. Uh, and, and like when, so every night on, on every Monday night, so I'm going to, I'm going to quickly shout this out real quick. Every Monday night at 8 PM PST for two to three hours, I'm on Twitch giving mixed feedback live. And for those that are subscribed to my Twitch and pay the $5 or use their Amazon prime account to subscribe. Um, or if you want to give tips, uh, whatever, then I can send you a mastered version of your stereo audio file at least for reference, or you could keep it and release that. Um, but every Monday night on Twitch, 8 p.m., um, twitch.tv backslash dkmixes. You can also go to links.dkmixes.com um, to get to my Twitch. Um, but anyway, on there, I would listen to a lot of mixes from various different peoples. There, there, is, there is a difference in quality of mixes from someone that does not automate their stuff and has general blanket effects on everything, Versus someone that does. And for me, like, especially, especially in like really intricate, like pop songs and trap music, I don't think it matters that much. Um, just like have a general blanket Travis Scott type reverb in the ad libs kind of thing, you know? But, um, yeah. And right now there's like a big trend with like blanketed reverbs, like post, like crazy amounts of reverb. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we'll see, uh, like, I think that taking it away, moving it around, like playing with reverbs and automating those is and delays is is a huge thing. I think that that make, can make make a song a mix feel more expensive. Yeah, definitely. Um, and with minimal effort too, it doesn't take that long to automate a send. Yeah, I've always told people like the effects are what kind of create the emotion in a track. Something with a longer reverb that's sung slow with down tempo music. Or a lack of. Yeah, exactly. A lack of reverb is super intimate. Yeah, like honestly, you do an acoustic track with minimalistic reverb, maybe just some room tone reverb, you know, like get a room verb going, um, can make the performance seem a lot more natural, a lot more lively. And because of that, I mean, I'm just saying like, uh, uh, what's that one song me and you bonded over? Acoustic guitar, um, uh, Gentlemen Don't Kiss and Tell. Um, Gay Bondock. Is is that what it was? What was the name of the track? Uh, yeah, I think it's like uh, "Gentlemen Don't" by Gabe yeah. Bondoc. Um, that track is not the best recording I've ever heard. Sorry if that offends anyone. Are you talking about like the acoustic version where he's on the YouTube? The acoustic version. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. he's just recording into like a portable microphone. Oh, whatever is going on, but the overall feel of it is amazing. I like it. I there's like there's it a lot. many. I like it more than the original. There's many instances where. Um, there's many instances where I like absolutely nothing. Yeah. Like not even room, not even slap, nothing, Mm -hmm. absolutely nothing. I just leave it dry. And, uh, there's a really cool intimate sense to that too. Um, when in a world full of reverbs and delays, when you, when you put something dry, even if it's just for a moment, like this, this is the most common thing when like everything drops off for a second. Like if uh, um, there's a bunch of reverb and then the beat just drops and then the vocals get really dry before the chorus drop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that sounds super cool. Like I like that. It really helps you appreciate where the vocals are placed relative to everything else. So I think that that's, that's dope. So on that note, is there anything else you want to add? I think that was like some pretty good information there. Um, if I had to add anything is don't overthink it. Too many people add way too many effects thinking they need more and more and more. 
in my experience, usually when people have that mentality, it sounds way too drowned out in the mixer or whoever ends up uh, with the files mixing it ends up taking more of it out. So don't overthink it. You don't need a whole ocean worth of reverb, but if you do these tricks, uh, implement them, uh, I know we quickly glanced over them, but these are things that you can always uh, DM us about, email us about. Uh, we're always happy to create uh, content for people to be able to download from our links. I know DK has a lot of them on his, uh, what is it, links.dkmixes? Um, dot com. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you guys are looking for specific tips and tricks, you know, this may be a good way to ask us like about them. Maybe we can create little tutorial videos of the different things we do and just offer those out outside of that. I mean, once again, don't overthink it. It's not that hard. It's creative music. Just whatever feels good is good. Yeah. And if you haven't already, feel free to join our discord where we talk about this stuff. You can get feedback from other peers. We have over 400 people in our Discord channel right now at this current moment. Um, and it's actually kind of blowing up. It's done. Nice. It's been doing really great. So join our Discord uh, and give some, do some mixed feedback. All of my communication and file uploading and stuff like that um, comes from Discord for the Twitch streams anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of people on there that are very helpful. We answer questions on there all the time as well in person. Uh, we've hosted seminars on there. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, And... Uh, on that note, like, do you want to announce what you were talking about this week? Or are you are you waiting to wait to uh, take that step? Not quite yet, but I will say this. Um, if you guys listen back to the Niching Down episode, it's a very important episode, and it's been something that I've been considering. Um, as I get busier with a lot of the work I do, um, I always consider where can I niche down, where can I become more efficient, and uh, what is and what the part of the process of, you enjoy more? Yeah, exactly. What do I enjoy most? Um, and the funny thing is, um, you know, just like DK, uh, I mix and master, but I actually get uh, more mastering requests than I do mixing. Mixing tends to require a little more time that I don't always have, so I end up turning away certain gigs. And instead of doing that, I'd like to focus more on being able to help out as many people as I can. So. Um, I am considering going uh, solely into mastering now. Now, check out the niching down episode. This will explain the mentality behind it. But for those of you considering going into just a specialty, I invite you to really listen to that episode and you'll understand why I may just become strictly a mastering engineer. I love the process. I love how many people I can help out in a single day. And to be honest, I love just being involved, even if it's just helping somebody get that final touch on an already great mix. There you go. So we'll uh, we'll keep you posted because I, I, I think like uh, there's some details we need to figure out, but oh yeah, you're Always. ready to jump whenever. So uh, and I'm I'm obviously I'm in full support of it. So uh, we'll make an announcement when that happens. Sounds and then it'll good. be like the official thing. The Lou is now officially a mi mi mastering engineer. Oh, yeah. And uh, Lou will be too cool for the mixers. Maybe I'll have to rename the company Midside Masters. Dang. Actually, I think that name is taken if I use the Midside acronym. Mastering? Yeah. No, I was going to say um, MSM. Or no, that was MSN. SMN, SNM, no, just SNM, kidding. yeah, there we go. Sided no, mid I got a little too excited for that. But uh, Midside Mastering has a pretty good ring to it. All right, you know what? Said, I go got too excited that. for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that note, my friends, happy mixing and stay saucy. One, two, three. Have you ever wanted to shadow or sit right next to a pro mix engineer to see how they work their magic? Well, now you can. Click on the private Discord server invitation on mixingmusicpodcast.com to get exclusive access to our private live streams directly on Discord and get notified when we go live on Twitch and YouTube.